then. We welcome our Facebook viewers. I'm Andy Hum here with Marin Johns. Hi, guys. How are you? Marin of Queer40.com. Check out that website. Queer40 fame. Yes. Check out our website at gayusatv.org and sign up for our email list if you haven't already. And I, I will include the, uh, the Charles Silverstein article links that I didn't include last week that I said I would, but this week I will. Mm. Because, you know, there's so many things to keep track of. So much stuff. That's right. We no sooner wrap a show than there's more. Yeah. We have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. And I'm Marin Johns. Marin, uh, this has Ann Northrup under your name, but uh, you are Marin Johns. Huh? They were oh, I manifested that. I actually emailed Ann just a few minutes ago. So mm -hmm. that'll be Anne, we'll be back next week. Uh, we are two journalists in our primes. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, uh, that's where we're leading off the news this week. You know, CNN's Don Lemon, out gay correspondent there, attacked uh, Nikki Haley. Uh, who then uh, went after Ron DeSantis for not being anti-gay enough. And we have two more out LGBTQ federal judges. They've been confirmed. Now, George Santos, you, you realize, will not resign, he says, uh, but a veteran out gay U.S. House member is stepping down soon. And over at the New York Times, contributors and activists have slammed the paper and its editors for their slant on trans issues. Yes, and they got a, a sh sharp rebuke from the editors of the paper. A Montana, Montana man who wanted to kill all the LGBTQ people in this town uh, is convicted of federal hate crimes. You don't say. And for the first time, a trans federal inmate gets gender confirmation service surgery while serving a life sentence. Yes, uh, we're going to remember Raquel Welch, uh, write her Donald Spato and the biggest Rocky Horror fan ever. Over in the UK, two 15-year-olds have been charged in the murder of a trans teen. Awful story. But in South Korea, a big gay rights breakthrough. In AIDS news, there is an MPOX threat to people living with advanced HIV. Yes, but also news on the vaccine, which is very effective. Uh, out country songwriter Shane McAnally has a show that is Broadway bound. And also on Broadway, we're going to review pictures from home. I went and saw that with Andy. And I starred Nathan Lane, Zoe Wanamaker and Danny Burstein. So you've all heard about Don Lemon, the, the out gay uh, anchor of the morning news now at CNN, who uh, now infamously, uh, uh, well, we, we have him on with uh, on his morning show, um, who said that Nikki Haley there uh, was, uh, uh, she's not in her prime. Uh, a woman isn't in her prime and, you know, uh, maybe in the 20s and 30s, but Nikki's 50 something. And no, no, no. And, and of course, this, this alarmed and dismayed his co hosts, and uh, that his remarks were reprehensible. Listen, and as a gay man, I'm going to revoke his gay card because, honestly, the prime of Miss Jean Brody is required viewing for all gay men. And if he doesn't know that women over 50 are still in their prime, I don't know how good of a gay he is. Well, Miss Jean Brody, is, as I remember, was a fascist sympathizer. <laughs> and, and what can we say about Nikki Haley? So Nikki Haley immediately turns around. So what Don did was terrible. He, he has apologized for it, and he's undergoing uh, uh, training 
consciousness raising, which we all need if we're going to get through uh, this life. Um, and and I, I hope it works out for him, but I don't know. He has to, has to respond. But Nikki Hill then calls him a bigot. Uh, Nikki Hill, all right. And here she was when she was making her announcement, making all kinds of ageist remarks. We, uh, we, we want mental competency tests for people uh, over 75, meaning Trump and, and Biden. Uh, we, uh, we're a new generation. You know, we, we need new blood, you know, this kind of stuff. So come on. You know, so she was playing that she was playing the age card as well. And in terms of bigotry, she has supported the worst bigot, Donald Trump. She worked for his administration. Yeah, I have to say kudos to uh, Poppy Harlow. I'm taking my hat off to you as uh, your, your retort to Don Lemon when he said he was uncomfortable with this conversation. He didn't see how a woman who was 51 could still be considered to be in her prime. And she said, you know, uh, I think we need to be clear here. What, what kind of prime are you talking about? Prime for childbearing or are you talking about prime for being president? Don't shoot the messenger, says Don Lemon. I'm just saying what the facts are. I mean, I don't want to get into trouble, but I used to hear that a woman's sexual prime was much older uh, than a man's, that a man's sexual prime was 18. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's all downhill from there, guys. Well, anyway. So anyway, then um, Nikki, can we move on to Nikki again? Let's, let's move on. So Nikki gets asked in an interview about Ron DeSantis's Don't Say Gay Law in Florida, and she says... Oh, that doesn't go nearly far enough. Florida only bans mention of sexual orientation and gender identity through the third grade. I'd do it through the seventh grade, and only then with parental consent. So she was yeah. trying to outflank him from the right. Yeah, I think so. And then uh, Carrie Lake, the failed Arizona governor candidate and would-be U.S. Senate candidate in 2024 versus K Kirsten Cinema and Ruben Gallego, is trying to tar Ron DeSantis, by, who was one of her supporters, by saying he's backed by George Soros, which is Republican speak for Jewish and liberal support. Uh, all yeah. Soros actually said was that DeSantis is likely to be the 2024 nominee for the Republican Party and that he is shrewd, ruthless, and ambitious. Now, previously, Lake had praised DeSantis as having, may I say this on our program, BDE, a new phrase for me. I had not heard that. It stands for Big Dick Energy. Oh, yes. Not exactly. yes. That's vulgar, but it's not uh, believable. Anyway, she says Trump has it too. <laughs> I'm sorry, the lesbian has to laugh. I mean, I've met I've met more women with better BDE than these guys. For sorry. Sure. And Lake <laughs> also said this week that if Christians turn violent against drag queens, it's the fault of the drag queens. I don't no. know how much longer the people can take it, she said, this transgender freak show craze that's happening in front of our kids. So if you really want to see a freak show, go to a Carrie Lake rally. Um, totally. And look, when you when you Google Carrie Lake, the phrase that precedes that search is failed, the word failed. So let me say she's going to come out with more outrageous comments because it's the only way she can stay uh, relevant and trending. And then Trump came out for group executions on television this week, if he's elected. <laughs> wow. It's, That's he's we're on the wrong continent for that. Uh, but can we move on to some better news? Uh, let's talk about what's going on uh, among our federal judges. Yes. Uh, the Senate has confirmed Biden nominee Gina Mendez Miro as Puerto Rico's first LGBTQ federal judge. The Senate voted 54 to 42 to approve Mendez Miro. Uh, she's previously a Puerto Rico appeals court judge. Uh, so that, that was a bit of good news indeed. She is. And she's also... Um, uh, married to the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Puerto Rico, uh, uh, M-A-I-T-E, the first name, Oranaz Rodriguez. Uh, and they're the mothers of twins, a boy and a girl. Now, uh, let's keep a scorecard here. Uh, Biden has gotten 100 judges confirmed. 76 have been women, 68 people of color. Uh, and while Biden has moved faster than Trump, experts don't think he's going to equal the 231 installed by Trump. Uh, on all of Trump's judges were members of the right wing Federalist Society, oh. almost all of them. Yeah, I like the quality. I like the quality of his picks. So, 
Now, I think this is an, and also uh, the Senate also confirmed the first out LGBTQ judge for the Eastern District of California, Daniel Calabretta, who was uh, an LGBTQ rights advocate. Well, he was prior to this. Now, this is the time we're talking about judges. You know, the right wing always goes to that one judge in Texas to get everything they want, and then he makes a national injunction against things, Matthew uh, Kazmarek. Um, they're trying to do it to ban the abortion pill. Uh, uh, let me uh, pronounce it improperly. Mif Mifepresto, right? I think uh, he wants to ban it nationally. That's what they're trying to do. So really, people are looking at this and saying, hey, you know, we can't just let you, you can't just go to any the same judge all the time and get what you want. There has to be more of a selection. We have to stop this judge. Or they call it forum shopping, judge shopping, mm -hmm. couldn't be able to do it. And, uh, and right. And Senator Ron Wyden uh, uh, proposed the administration not following the court order, saying it's illegitimate. Because he wants to, they want to overrule the FDA. The FDA has approved the pill for decades. Anyway. All right. Um, okay. Uh, let's talk about the, the, uh, the trans prisoner in Texas. Oh, Okay, I'm just skipping over George. I'm skipping over Santos there and all the bills he's supporting. Oh, we'll get, oh, we'll get to him. We'll get to him. Um, so this now, where is he? Well, they, she. This is a very interesting story. Have you um, been following this one? Um, my understanding of this prisoner was uh, they're in their sixties. And their representation has said they've waited all of their life, most of their life, for this gender reassignment surgery. Um, but it was interesting to find out what that, that what they were serving their sentence for is uh, armed robbery and being uh, a member of an Aryan white supremacist uh, gang, which they put down to toxic masculinity and participating in toxic masculinity to to suppress their transgender identity, which I think was a very interesting interesting case there. Yes, absolutely. So she is the, Donna Langan, her name is, is the first one to uh, get uh, gender confirmation surgery in prison, in a federal prison. So that is a breakthrough. All right. Um, and oh, uh, another appointment we want to talk about, uh, Senator Schumer appointed out gay Glenn Magpante, there he is on the right at, at a pride march, uh, to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. He's a Queens, New York-based civil rights attorney and professor. He was sworn in February 15th. He was already an advisor to the commission and is going to serve a six-year term, one of eight, and uh, the, uh, also appointed, by the way, and, and Glenn has been very active in uh, Asian American Pacific Islander LGBTQ groups uh, in New York and nationally. Um, but And he's going to be the only Asian American on the commission. But another recent appointment was out Congress member Mondaire Jones, who did not uh, get elected to the House again. And so he's going to serve on that commission, too. So two gays, at least. Yeah, it's terrific. And I do think that Asian minorities are very under under uh, represented in this country. People from the it's, it's a huge demographic from the Indian subcontinent to Southeast Asia. Uh, I don't think that we have enough visible representatives looking out for these people. And uh, uh, Meg Pente, he wrote a very good uh, piece explaining his history working for this demographic. So I, I look forward to what he does. But we still have that gay Republican in the Congress, George Santos. Yes. <laughs> who Who is honestly terrifying to me. He reminds me of the Woody Allen character, Zelig, who keeps popping up at key moments on any side. And all of the bills, I was absolutely horrified when I saw how many bills he's sponsoring or co-sponsoring. I think there's about 16. And some of them are quite terrifying. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it's all gun rights and- Oh, and expanding gun rights, rights yes. and use of fetal tissue. Uh, he would prohibit uh, publishing houses from providing sexually explicit materials to schools. It goes on and on and on. It's all right-wing stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, banning TikTok on campus. Um, one of the ones that I thought was truly uh, shocking was repeal the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. And this was uh, this act is in place to help fight inflation and reduce prescription drug prices, especially for seniors. I'm not sure why you'd be going against a bill like that. Now, a viewer wrote me and said um, only his constituents can remove him, and that is not true. Uh, the House has the power. You would need a two-thirds vote in the House to remove somebody. And when somebody gets convicted of a felony, they do. Now, yes. Philadelphia gay activist Malcolm Lazen, who is no great liberal, he asked the House Ethics Committee to investigate Santos' heterosexual marriage to a Brazilian woman who got citizenship through George and is now seeking citizenship for her new spouse. And uh, the question is, you know, was this all was this fraud? Mm. And if it was, it's a crime. Um, and, you know, he was openly gay throughout the whole marriage. He said he was pretty much in love with his wife, pretty much in love with him. Sounds like wow. Crazy. And um, anyway, uh, friends, friends of Santos said he was gay all his adult life and uh, dated men while he was married. Um, he's an outspoken critic of illegal immigration, and he loves to have, uh, but he looks to have benefited from this fraudulent marriage. He could mm -hmm. face five years in prison and his ex-wife could be deported. Mm. Uh, Santos also said, you know, when Romney went after him, he said, well, Senator Sinema, Kirsten Sinema came up to me and said, you hang in there, George, after that incident. And uh, Sinema's office said, that is a lie. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't imagine she, she would have said that. No. But... All right. So he's not leaving, but let's talk about who is. Oh, yes. Well, uh, up in Rhode, we're going to Rhode Island now. Is that correct? Yes. Um, please correct me if, if we pronounce uh, David Cicilline's name, Cicilline or Cicilline. Yes. Well, I've always said Cicilline. I do really like this man. He's worked very hard for our community. I first uh, met him when he was mayor of Providence. Ah. And we actually were in Prague together one, one year, I think it was 2013, on a panel together. And he was there to advise uh, key politicians uh, of the Czech Republic how to come out and why coming out was really important for states people. And I moderated mm -hmm. the panel that he was on and he was terrific, articulate, passionate, energetic. I know we're going to miss his service, but I think he might be going on to other and better things. Well, it's going on to the Rhode Island Foundation, which provides funding for local nonprofits. But he was first elected in 2010 to the, to the, to the House. Right. And uh, he's, he was co-chair of the Equality Caucus from 2011 yes. to 2020. And he helped pass 10 LGBTQ rights bills in the House four of which were signed into law. So we will miss him. He's leaving at the end of May. That before his, yeah, before his term is up. But that, that's got to be a record, I think. And, of course, he was instrumental in getting the Respect for Marriage Act across the line and signed into law. So I, I have to thank him eternally for that. Right. You might recognize him as one of the impeachment prosecutors in the House. Uh, that's yeah. really He's a tough guy. Yeah. Both a gay and uh, Italian and Jewish. Not Jewish, like Santos, Jewish. <laughs> All right, Montana. Montana passed a bill giving teachers a right to bully trans kids by misgendering them. The bill says it's not discriminatory to refer to another student by their birth sex or to refer to them by their legal name. Passed 66 to 34. One Republican sp sponsor said, it's not bullying unless it rises to the level of physical violence. Oy. And that, and- oh that anything else is suppression of speech. It's a profound per perversion of the harm that words do, I think. Uh, another said, we're under no obligation to be kind to one another, and students are under no obligation either to be kind to one another. What a terrible <gasps> thing to say. I, I do find, I actually do find this shocking, and I don't think I've ever seen uh, a, a two of America's amendments so thoroughly twisted to, to the point of harm. Uh, against its citizens. I mean, you know, freedom of speech is is very different to hate crime. I cannot believe those two things are joining up. But And Kentucky passed a bill very similar to that. It prohibits staff and students, prohibits them from using preferred pronouns. It also requires schools to give families two weeks notice before any lesson on human sexuality uh, can be taught and requires schools to be notified if mental health or physical health services 
our access. Now, one legislator, we have a picture of her, Democratic Senator Karen Byrd, said during the debate, and her trans child took her life in December, took uh, his life, his life, I'm sorry, in December at the age of 24. I am no longer speaking for my child. You know, my child is dead. So I am speaking for every mother and father who has held my hand with tears running down their faces saying, what did we do? Her colleagues were unmoved. They voted 29 to six for this anti-trans bill on a party line vote. Uh, it's yeah. a red state getting redder, uh, though they yeah. do have a Democratic governor, Steve Bashir. but uh, if he vetoes this, it's not going to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Just as a reminder, Berg's son was Henry Berg Russo, a trans staffer with HRC. So if you're not safe and, and reaffirmed working at HRC, you know, God help you. Right. Well, in Vermont, though, parents can now select a non-binary marker for their children's initial birth certificates. Uh, Trump wants to forbid stuff like this, by the way, if he gets elected next year. The designation can be a placeholder if the child wants to identify dif differently later. Okay, so what's going on with Brittany Griner? Yes, Brittany Griner is quite simply back. I think it's such fabulous news. She's really come back to win and, and uh, you know, what a relief after 10 months being locked up in Russia. But uh, Phoenix Mercury has now confirmed that Griner's, ha, Griner has returned to the WNBA uh, this season playing with, with Phoenix Mercury. She, of course, lives in Phoenix. Uh, and she was a free agent in terms of being an athlete, but she re-signed with the team on Tuesday. Uh, so uh, I'm very gonna happy. It's going to be great watching her in action again. I hope they're paying, enough, her, paying her enough so she doesn't have to go off to some horrible regime. To get Honestly, I got to say, I don't think she's getting paid enough. And I don't know if this is the differential between male athletes and female athletes, but her wage for the year is only $165,000, which is certainly more than I earn. But when you're <laughs> a kind of a most valuable player, athlete, star, you know, hugely symbolic figure, gosh, somebody's got to help her maybe, out. Maybe she can start raking in some endorsements. Yeah. All right. Let's go to some crime news. All right, uh, a man in Montana, now we've, we've been on this story before, but yeah. he was on a mission to kill all the LGBTQ people in his small town of Basin, uh, Montana. And he was just convicted on federal hate crimes charges, John Russell Howard, 46 years old. He fired his AK style assault rifle at the home of a lesbian in town, fired it repeatedly. Um, and though the woman was not harmed, um, a local pastor saw this and tried to calm him down, and he, he said, I, I hope I just killed a lesbian, and he planned to get rid of the rest of the LGBTQ people in town. Now, he's already serving 10 years for the crime. Now he'll be sentenced for the federal hate crimes and gun charges, um, and if you uh, look at his long record of violence, you wonder, against animals and children, you mm. might wonder why he was able to buy a gun. Right. Or own a gun. No, he, he's a sociopath. And the fact that he's not already under lock and key is surprising to me. Well, for 10 years anyway. Uh. All right. Uh, Chicago. Uh, again, we told you about the house invasion uh, murder of a trans woman and her mother and other people were shot up in January. Uh, prosecutors failed to charge a 19-year-old suspect who lived in the building, even though he was identified in a lineup. They're basically saying they don't have enough evidence yet to indict. Well, all right, uh, this guy has a long felony record. Um, uh, it, you know, two people were killed, and uh, that was Unique Banks, 20, transgender, and their mother, Alexandra Olamo, uh, 43. Three of the other victims were hospitalized. But, okay, can we go to Florida to the Escamba County School Board? Florida, where woke goes to die. I'm quoting Ron DeSantis there. Well, this is, you know, we told you how they want to ban all these books, right? So in the, in the school board, they've got a process. If people object to a book, they put it through a panel. In this case, the panel 
approved of all the books, but the board voted to get rid of them. And we're talking about books like they were objected to by a racist, homophobic English teacher who says terrible things to gay people all the time, has a history of bigotry. And um, one of the books was uh, And Tango Makes Three about the penguins. Yes. And he said, this is just the LGBTQ agenda through penguins. And they also went after, what else? All Boys Aren't Blue. And when Aiden becomes a brother about a trans boy. But again, the experts looked at the books, said there's nothing objectionable about these books. These books belong in the library. Mm -hmm. They are gone. Who, Andy, who do I sue for the Grimm's fairy tales that I read as a child that gave me absolute nightmares mm -hmm. and are blueprints for compulsory heterosexuality? Like, who do I sue for that? Exactly. I, you know, I can remember, you know, somebody coming into the Gay Cable Network office years ago and saying, who do I sue for, you know, all the uh, anti-gay psychiatry we were put up, we <laughs> had to put up with all those years. And by the way, I mentioned Charles Silverstein, the great gay therapist who died. I will put the links to my article about him. Uh, yes. And, and his article about getting us out of the index of mental disorders in 1973. That's uh, a great, that's a great article. Email. So just go to Gay USA TV. Uh, uh, by the way, we forgot to mention that DeSantis came to New York and Chicago and a couple of other blue states last week. Yes. Uh, he was on the hunt to try to prove why um, his law and order platform is going to be, a, I suppose, uh, an election platform federally. He knows that uh, New York City is in a bit of a jam right now with crime statistics, apparently, depending on who you listen to. Uh, so uh, he, he, he basically goes out and stumps in Staten Island about uh, law and order. And the, what we the murder to... rate in Florida is much higher than New York. Mm. But, you know, he doesn't take any responsibility for that. Uh, but Mayor Adams, who was, you know, uh, not always great on our stuff, he said, welcome to New York, Governor DeSantis, a place where we don't ban books, <laughs> discriminate against our LGBTQ neighbors, use asylum seekers as props, or let the government stand between a woman and health care. <laughs> yes. And other news in New York, we had a flag burning here. Listen, I never thought I'd see the day where a restaurant in Soho, which is pretty much, if you know Manhattan, Soho is pretty, you know, LGBTQ friendly. It's always been a home of artists and diverse people as well as being a tourist attraction. But uh, a, a restaurant that was flying a rainbow flag uh, became vandalized by a, a young white woman who, who, got a cigarette lighter, set fire to the flag and ran off. I, I don't know what she was thinking, uh, but they've got her. She's been arrested. She's Angelina Cando, arrested on Tuesday. She's now facing charges, including arson as a hate crime uh, for this act that she perpetrated at 1.30 in the morning on Monday in front of the restaurant Little Prince, which, by the way, is a, is a beautiful restaurant. Uh, so I hope she thinks that it was worth it. But in February, do you know, she was already charged with menacing and in January for assault, according to authorities. So uh, who was she menacing? Uh, people. And uh, she uh, scrawled, Jesus is king on cop cars on Sunday night as well. I'm so getting some, I'm getting some emails to that effect, <laughs> by the way, these days. People who tell me I'm going to hell, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is not. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, they put up a new rainbow flag, even larger than the, the one before said, make America gay again. This is a this is a larger flag, <laughs> much more inclusive flag. And that went up. Uh, Eric Botcher, the local council member, played a role in getting that thing up there right away within hours. And of course, they did damage to the decorations outside the place as well. Yeah. Right. I mean, she, she needs help, that girl. I hope she thinks it was worth it. And we need your help in Wisconsin. They had the first round of their election for the state high court, the Supreme Court, and Judge Janet uh, Prostowicz uh, won the uh, got the f highest number of votes, she had like 50, uh, 46 percent. And the Republicans got a lot less. And another Democrat got votes. So anyway, she's going to face a Republican on April the fourth. A guy named Dan Kelly, an election denier, who may be guilty of. Uh, trying to rig the election. That's how bad it is. This will decide the balance of the court in Wisconsin. It is considered the most important race in the country. This year, April 4th, Janet Prostowicz needs your help. Yes.
Okay. Uh, in North Dakota, the House passed a bill requiring parents uh, to give their permission if, a, if their kid is going to join any kind of a student club. So that could put the kibosh on them joining some of the LGBTQ uh, activities. That's the idea. That's who's being targeted. Yes. And in Florida, for the second time, the, a federal judge tossed a lawsuit against Don't Say Gay, said that the people, the students, the parents, the teachers who were suing don't have standing. You may feel hurt, but that's not enough, he said. I think, I think this is something that will actually change over time because according to the ruling, the, the plaintiffs need to show that they suffer harm and that the harm can be traced to the new law. I think that's something that's actually going to be uh, demonstrable over time. I agree. And then there's this very odd case that we've told you about in Oklahoma, but we have an update on it. A judge transferred a lesbian mother's parental rights to her son's sperm donor. Now, this is uh, uh, Chris uh, Walls, who was uh, a lesbian. Uh, she apparently failed. She was in a relationship, and she failed to co-adopt the child. Or adopt, yes. But she was married. Uh, and so, you know, basically, and the ex-partner want, wants to, is living with the sperm donor, and now they're the parents, and she's shut out. It's really yeah. a terrible case. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's legal parenting is still a legal minefield. You really have to cross your T's and dot your I's and get uh, legal uh, advice from the outset. Now, you all think of the New York Times as this liberal newspaper, but not on everything. Uh, Marin, bring us up to date on this controversy at the New York Times over their trans coverage. Okay, so when, when you say that, I just find it so interesting because um, George Santos did say that he found the New York Times elitist. And as, as much as I'm really loath to um, agree with him, I, I feel that, you know, the publication is playing into um, his hands in some way because uh, basically they ran an op-ed, I think it was an op-ed, saying that J.K. Rowling had done nothing wrong. And if they knew anything about the discussion around transgender rights these days, they would have known how uh, kind of dangerous it is to come out with that as, as a, a point of view at all. Well, uh, before that article ran, which was by Pamela Paul, who used to yes. be the book review editor at the time, yes. and a big anti-porn activist herself, uh, before that ran, Two letters had gone to the Times about the general coverage of the New York Times on these issues, which uh, these were signed by hundreds of people. One was from GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Defama Against Defamation, which had tried to work with the Times. And the other was from a bunch of contributors to the New York Times who were complaining about the paper's coverage. On as, as of last week, according to um, uh, our activist friend, Mr. Strangio, uh, the New York Times, there were more than a thousand Times contributors who signed on to that letter, uh, expressing their concerns uh, with the paper's coverage of transgender people. Right. Um, and the uh, Charlie Stratlander, the director of external newsroom communications, actually brushed off their concerns and said that this isn't a matter of journalism, this isn't something to be worried about, you shouldn't be siding with an activist organisation, an adv advocacy organisation such as GLAAD, who had also sent a letter. Even though um, there were two letters, and, it, and that's right. they did not sign on to the GLAAD letter, they signed on to their own letter. Exactly, uh, they were two separate letters. And then well, later in that same day, well, the Times executive editor, Joe Kahn, sent the internal memo to staff saying you should distance yourself from this and you shouldn't be signing on uh, to any protests. We won't tolerate it. Right. So, yeah. But, you know, the GLAAD, uh, GLAAD's response to this... Uh, uh, it said the Times is showing a willful disregard of LGBTQ community voices, characterizing their coverage as inaccurate, exclusionary, often ridiculous. And GLAAD put out one of those billboard trucks outside the, pa outside the paper's headquarters there on uh, 40, 40, 41st Street, I guess it is. I go by it all the time. Um, and it said, New York Times, stop questioning trans people's right to exist and access medical care. Yeah. Which is what some of these articles do. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's one of the problems I have with the New York Times generally. Uh, I know that they are a sacred cow. You're not meant to criticize them. Um, but 
I find very often that there is a lack of central intelligence with the editorial judgment and there's a kind of patchwork of opinions. And I find that quite an unusual thing to do editorially because I feel any masthead should have a kind of coherent, it should, the left hand should know what the right hand's doing well, when you're running. They did a terrible job on covering AIDS and we had yes. to protest them and covering a lot of gay. They wouldn't even use the word gay when I was a kid. I was in a meeting with the vice chairman of the paper and he still wouldn't use the word gay until the anti-gay editor, Abe Rosenthal, left. So it goes on and on and on. They have a history of this. Actually, if you go to the New York Times Index in the library in the, in, in, in the 1950s, it says, if you look up homosexuality, it says, see perversion. <laughs> That's what it says. So oh, I'm yeah. saying, look, we, we I think they need to make a stand. I think you need to know which side of history you're on. You can't hedge your bets. You have to pick sides. Uh, and I feel also, look, it's only in recent years that their obituary writers have mentioned if somebody, if, if the subject is gay or has surviving same-sex partners. I mean, this used to be something that was conveniently omitted. Well, they were late on same-sex marriage announcements, yeah. you know, and they were late. They did it. They do it now and they do it a lot now. Look, and they do a lot of good stories. There's no question. We get yes. some of our news from the Times. I've been a subscriber to the Times for 100 years. Well, almost anyway. Uh, but you know, me, me too. I, I'm, a, I, I'm a subscriber, and I, I value uh, uh, the Times as a journalist. I use them as a source all the time. But I think there needs to be some. When we're at a flashpoint moment in the history of a minority, I think you do need to pick a side. There are certain things that you can't argue about philosophically, when people's no. lives are at stake. And, you know, a lot of people are making a lot about that woman uh, who worked at a trans youth clinic in St. Louis who wrote a piece in something called the Free Press. Her name is Jamie Reed. She calls herself a queer woman. Um, but, you know, uh, she attacked them and said they're really doing malpractice and this need, I need to expose this. And I'm a queer woman. Well, she's hired right-wing lawyers from basically Alliance Defending Freedom and all those right-wing groups uh, to help her out and try to shut down the clinic. So I have, I would, that's, that's not kosher. Mm. All right. So shall we talk about people we've lost this week? Yes. You know, um, last week, just as we popped off air, we found out that Raquel Welsh had uh, died and she was actually a favorite of mine. I always thought she was so intelligent and very direct, very honest, refreshingly so. Uh, and she said some amazing things about being in a very complicated and dreadful film called Myra Breckenridge, which was, I think, the first film to try to portray a transgender person. Andy, what's your take on that film? Well, yes, uh, she was Myra Breckenridge, which was based on a book by Gore Vidal in 1970. Uh, here she is with Mae West, who was the other co-star of the, another legendary uh, uh, sex symbol, I guess you could say. Uh, now, she's playing a transsexual. Uh, yes. Raquel is. But she's her, when her character was, a, was, was Myron Breckenridge, go to the next picture, uh, that Myron was played by Rex Reed, the, the out gay uh, theater and cinema critic. Uh, yeah. So uh, that was, she made more than 30 films twice on Broadway. She was also in the cross-dressing lead in Victor Victoria in 1997. Um, yeah, she, she told Out Magazine in 2012, I think I was a break from the soft blonde Marilyn Monroe type and I did a lot of roles that would normally be played by a young man. Yeah, I first saw her in Fantastic Voyage. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into all the plot there. It was 1966 though, I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, we also lost Donald Spaho, uh, uh, a biographer Best known for his books on film stars from Hitchcock to Marilyn Monroe and James Dean, died at the age of 81 of a brain hemorrhage in Denmark, where he retired and is survived by his husband, Ole Fleming Larson. Um, his 1992 biography on Laurence Olivier said Olivier had a 10 year affair with Danny Kay. You know. Now, how do you prove something like that? Because I remember, I remember when that came out and being so, so intrigued by it because there's such a lack of bisexual visibility in, in show business. Right. And I didn't disbelieve it. I just wondered how you could prove it. it well, the, uh, 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 you know, the Olivier people denied it. Uh, you know, I didn't hold the candle myself. Um, he also wrote a biography of Tennessee Williams, uh, The Kindness of Strangers, and he started out as a religion professor. And he did write books on Jesus and Joan of Arc, 
among 24 others. And then I, I don't know our next subject, uh, Sal Piro. Super fan. He's arguably one of the biggest first super fans. This is a this is a, a guy who who uh, went to by accident with a friend to see the first screening of the Rocky Horror Picture Show in Greenwich Village back in the day in uh, 1977 on a cold, snowy night, and and realized that what he was watching was this phenomenon uh, of audience participation. And then he became, I think, like the head of the fan club for the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and he's the person that really started this idea of going to the screening, dressing up, dancing in the aisles, repeating all the lines. I saw it once. He saw it 1,300 times. <laughs> and uh, he also taught theology at a Catholic high school in New Jersey. Um, but he also worked for 23 years as the at the Grove Hotel in Cherry Grove on Fire Island as the entertainment director at the Ice Palace. Totally. And if you think all of this is a waste of a life or a waste of time, the friend he took to see the movie was Mark Shaman, who I believe went on to become uh, one of the writers of Hairspray, the musical. So all that theatricality did find a home. That's great. That's great. I didn't know that. I'm glad I watched the show. I learned things when I watched the show. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, we want to remind you that the Reclaim Pride Coalition in New York City is holding a town hall on Saturday, February 25th at 6.30 p.m. at the LGBTQ Community Center, 208 West 13th Street, to plan the 2023 Queer Lib March for June 25th. You can attend in person or virtually through their social media and YouTube channels. Go to reclaimprideNYC.org for more information. Uh, they are asking you to register online if, if you would, so they get a sense of who's coming. And before we leave, uh, get to international news, new Gallup survey, 7.2% of U.S. adults identify as LGBTQ, up from 3.5% 11 years ago, but similar to last year. And of course, it's much more among the millennials and the Generation Z and, and all that. And the, uh, the other big statistic in the, in the younger, you know, uh, more than half of LGBTQ adults identify as bisexual. All right, international news. Yes. Which country do you want to visit first? Well, start, start in the UK with that horrible murder. Yeah, this is a very sad case. A 15-year-old boy and girl have been charged with the murder of transgender teen Brianna Jai, 16 years of age in UK in, in the UK. Uh, Brianna's body was found on a path and they and they've been stabbed to death multiple times. Um I, I believe this is uh a, a hate a hate crime uh i can't see what else it would be but i don't have any evidence of that yet they are uh they were a, a due to appear at a magistrate's court in chester uh so and it could be an the hate stirred up if you don't think that the hate stirred up by the likes of jk rowling don't have something to do with this with kids uh you haven't read her horrible tweets um she was yeah. Brianna was described as beautiful, witty, hilarious, strong, fearless, one of a kind. Yeah. Uh, they had candlelight vigils all across the country over her murder. It's just terrible. Yes. All right. In Israel, a prominent TV reporter, Yair Cherky, 30 years old, has come out as gay. Uh, uh, he's Orthodox uh, Jewish, and he said in a statement, I tremble as I write these words. I love men, and I love God. <laughs> and this is neither contradictory nor new. He's the son of a rabbi. He was hired by the top-rated Channel 12 as a religious affairs reporter in 2014. And he's gotten mostly a positive response on social media from all parties, uh, not, uh, not, not everybody in his family, but uh, from the parties uh, across the spectrum. Hmm. Uh, sent messages of encouragement. Um, so speaking of Sydney, uh, let's talk about what Rodney Croom, the legendary a gay activist over there had to say about uh, Sydney. Yeah, well, Rod Rodney's a fantastic, he's a really one-of-a-kind acti activist. Uh, we know of him. He's a native Tasmanian who worked very hard to have um, 
homosexual sex decriminalised in in Tasmania. As you know, Tasmania was the most effective penal colony in the history of the world. Um, So he had a lot of work to do, but he now is claiming that Tasmania is actually more liberal and more progressive on LGBTQ rights than Sydney. Sydney, as you know, is hosting World Pride right now. It's already started, but the um, opening concert starring Kylie Minogue is happening in uh, in about two days, I think. Um, But he's uh, picking fault with Sydney's laws and saying they're actually statistically uh, regressive compared to the rest of the country and that uh, Sydney is becoming more and more conservative and that there is more and more religious right uh, rising up and more and more homophobia and that you can't just blame it on immigrants or the suburbs. It's actually there. You know, Rodney is not wrong. Something is happening to Sydney, uh, but I think it's part of a global phenomenon. I think it's about the uh, international rise of conservatism, which we're also seeing here in New York City. A lot of it's attached to wealth disparity, I think, and digital media. Okay. And then going back to the UK for a second, there was this big story in the Times about how they're having to try to deprogram young men who are in a thrall to this Andrew Tate character. He's a big misogynist who's very popular on social media, who teaches uh, boys to disrespect girls uh, and, you know, promote. He's he's in, he's being, he and his brother are being detained for sexual harassment and rape in the Yes. So, I mean, but the schools say we can't ignore this. Some of the kids watch his videos, boys, four or five times a day, and, and they believe this stuff. So they're trying to, uh, to, uh, to, to do it. He's banned from, you know, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube now, but uh, they have a, a lot of his stuff still is floating around the uh, cyber space. Oh. Have you ever watched any of it? It's absolutely horrible. Um, Yeah, horrible guy. All right, let's go to Russia, where we know there is a horrible guy named Putin. A 28-year-old gay Chechen refugee. He had gotten out. He had been tortured in Chechnya. He got out. He came back to Russia for his father's funeral uh, from the Netherlands. And when he, as soon as he got to the airport, the authorities arrested him. He had a panic attack, we had to be taken to the hospital, and his lawyers fear he's going to be sent back to Chechnya, where he faces torture and death. His name is Idris Arsamakov, uh, and um, it's just uh, uh, frightening as hell. Yeah, he had a panic attack at the airport. I feel for him. I mean, it's it's stressful enough crossing borders, let alone that happening. Right. All right, South Korea. Landmark ruling by the High Court. This is big news. Yeah, this could be very interesting. Uh, the, Seoul, the Seoul High Court ruled on Tuesday that the state's uh, health insurers should provide spousal coverage to a same-sex couple in a decision that lawyers and advocates saying could mark the first legal recognition of same-sex unions and marriage in South Korea. Uh, this ruling overturned a lower court decision that a same-sex dependent was ineligible for benefits afforded other common law couples by the National Health Insurance Service. And the High Court wrote that protecting the rights of minorities is the biggest responsibility of the court as the last bastion of human rights. I wish our court felt that way. But apparently, you know, there was a big article that, you know, majority of South Koreans favor same-sex marriage. But the Christian right there, like here, is very powerful, minority, and they have stopped it. Okay. And the Japanese prime minister, uh, uh, Kishida, he yes. has, there he is. He's the second from the right there, met with LGBTQ groups. And uh, he apologized for the anti-LGBTQ bigotry of a former aide who we had to fire. And he appointed a special advisor on women's empowerment who will also advocate for LGBTQ rights. They're trying to get this all done before the G7 in May in Japan. But uh, they're still dragging their heels on full protections. Mm. What about Spain, though? Good news out of Spain. They passed a bill allowing trans people to change their gender markers without having to go through uh, a, a, do- a medical diagnosis. So that's good. Yeah. On the other hand, Russia's uh, federal c- censorship agency has a new automated system to search the Internet for... Uh, pictures and video content banned under the Russian 
law, including the one banning gay propaganda. Uh, the system also scans for undesirable images of poop. Oh, this is something out of George Orwell's 1984. The actual system is called Oculus, which doesn't that mean I? I mean, you're being watched, big brother. I think it's terrifying. But I read this story right on the heels of reading the Human Rights Watch report saying that digital media in North Africa and the Middle East is being used to dox and and surveil LGBTQ people, trump up charges, detain them, torture them, um, and imprison them as it's terrifying what's happening. Right. Should we move on to AIDS news? Yes. Uh, as we were as we were just coming on here, we learned that yet another patient has been cured of HIV, which is you know to completely rid the body of it. Uh, this is now called the Düsseldorf patient, somebody 53 years old. Um, uh, again, they did it through a, a stem cell transplant business. This is not a workable cure for the masses. They keep saying they hope they're going to learn something from this that will be a working cure uh, for the masses, but at least we have our uh, apparently our third cure of HIV. Mm. But people with HIV, especially those who are immunocompromised, got to watch out uh, about monkeypox because they did a study of uh, 328 HIV positive people in 28 nations who have a, C a CD4 count below 350 and 27 of them died of monkeypox. So it's a major concern. Uh, and the, there was also, a, 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 by the way, if you have 200 or more um, CD4 cells, you're supposed to be in the clear. So there's also a French study that says the vaccine for mpox is 99% effective. And we have a, a, a sexually transmitted infection crisis and they're having a big conference about this in Seattle right now. And the public health, health pub, some public health experts want the CDC to endorse the idea of taking antibiotics after sex to prevent infection. It does work, mm -hmm. but now they're worried you're going to just make antibiotics ineffective if that's what you're relying on. So that's totally. where we are on this. Yeah. I would be. I would not be in favor of that because that contributes to the superbug, or so we've been told. I think. I think education in sexual Absolutely. matters and prevention is far better. And they also discussed. They also did find a French study that a meningococcal B vaccine halved new gonorrhea rates. So that's good. Hmm. Okay, entertainment news. Well, Ooh, at the, at the yeah. end. Of the at the Coming NAACP, out and marriages and the whole works. Yeah, at the NAACP Image Awards of February 25th on BET, the President's Award is going to be presented to Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade for their social justice work, including deep involvement in LGBTQ rights. They stand up for their trans daughter, Zaya. Uh, Gabrielle once said on The Ellen Show, it's odd to get recognition for doing what you're supposed to do, which is to love and accept your kids, but unfortunately, there are so many people who just don't. They've attended Pride with Zaya, uh, fought for her name change, and tried to protect her from negative social media. Okay. Uh, so we went to see a show. Yes, we did. That was fun, Andy. Andy and I went to the theater together. We went and saw pictures from home. I've, look, I keep my playbills, Andy. Um, what did you think? Tell us what you think first. Well, well, we both saw it. We can both talk about it. First of all, this is theater royalty there. That's Danny. Uh, basically, it's Suburban Home, right? Uh, there's Nathan Lane on the right with Zoe Wanamaker as his wife uh, in, in, in Suburban California. And, uh, you know, they're, they're all, and Danny Burstein is their son, and he keeps coming down to work on a photography project. He's a photography professor. He wants to take pictures of them. He wants to look at home movies. He wants to write a book about it, all this kind of stuff. And they fight about it the whole time. Um, it's So I thought it was very evocative of, you know, suburban life in the 20th century, basically. Um, but it's a lot of it is told to us directly. They talk to us. They turn yeah. to the audience and they tell you things. I prefer when things are dramatized. There are some very funny moments. I don't know if it all hangs together as a play. I have two friends who went the other day. They, they enjoyed it very much. So look, I'd go see these people do anything because they're yeah. such great, great, great actors. Great, great actors, not, not, a, not a word out of place, not one fluffed line. Uh, the energy, the discipline that Nathan Lane to sustain his performance, which is basically 
you know, the longest bit I've ever seen. He plays this incredibly closed, patriarchal, tense white man. And I feel that 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 is also my criticism of the play. I didn't recognise these people. I can't relate to them. They're awash in privilege and their biggest question was when can they retire to Palm Desert and play more golf? Listen, if that's your bag, this is your play. But it is beautifully done, beautifully written, beautifully performed. It, It just feels to me a little bit anachronistic. Like I could have watched the documentary of this. I could have watched the 35 minute Netflix special and I could have read the book. It is based on a true story. I know. All right. Um, We're running out of time. Out gay country music songwriter, who's really one of the most prolific and famous ones, Shane McAnally. He has a show coming to Broadway called Shucked. It's going to be starting previews on March 8th. And in a Times profile, we read how he is one of Nashville's biggest songwriters for stars such as Josh Osborne, who's out gay, but also, and he's out gay, uh, but also uh, Casey Musgraves, Blake Shelton, Keith Urban, Sam Hunt. 39 songs he's had at number one on Billboard's country chart. He's the co-president of Monument Records. He's making an effort to rewrite the genre's DNA to encourage mutation in its hidebound assumptions about sex and gender. So I, I didn't know about this guy. I'm sorry. I'm not in the country music world. I'm Partly in the music world, for that matter, but uh, I was uh, I was very moved by his uh, achievements. Yes, right. Tell us about Zach Heron. He's NASCAR racer. Zach Heron is using his rainbow colored car to fight. Don't say gay laws. Uh, he has teamed up with Lambda Legal, and their logo is going to be emblazoned on his Toyota Camry stock car, along with the rainbow design. Um, there right. it is. Lambda Legal Defense is our oldest, uh, uh, goes back to the early 70s, uh, fighting for LGBTQ rights in the courts. Yep. So buckle up, Daytona. He's coming for you. He's especially determined to bring the car to the Don't Say Gay state of Florida, where the D- D- Daytona 200 is run. Uh, <laughs> Lambda, Lambda CEO Kevin Jennings is a NASCAR fan and hopes young people will see Zach and his car as symbols of hope. There's Zach on the right there with his, uh, his partner. Is it partner or husband? I'm sorry. I apologize, Zach. Hope you're having a great time down there in Florida and bringing the truth out. That's right. Okay. Uh, in baseball. Yes. White Sox minor leaguer, Anderson Comas, 23 years old, has come out as gay. I just want to say something to those who say that gay people cannot be someone in life. Look at me. I'm gay and I'm a professional athlete. So that didn't stop me from making my dreams come true. Uh, mm-hmm. So he's out and he's proud. And he ended last season with the Class A Canopolis. Yep. Supported by his team and the organization, thankfully. And Rebel Wilson is making news. Talk about her. Yes, my fellow Aussie who only came out. What a year she's had. She only came, she's nudged out of the closet last year by an Australian journalist. Uh, so she had to make a quick decision, jump on Instagram and tell everybody. Uh, she's with Ramona, a groomer who's an on- entrepreneur. And uh, she's had a baby via surrogate named Royce just a few months ago. And now she's uh, proposed to uh, Ramona in Disneyland. Uh, so that's, that. that's a hell of a year. Uh, they, they have. Um, she's also um, launched an app. Uh, yes, with, it's with, a dating app called Fluid, and it is aimed at people who do not want to be classified necessarily. Good for her. Why didn't somebody right. think of that sooner? Amazing. Any gender, any gender, any this, you know, any that. I mean, you're all welcome to Fluid. I have to know. <laughs> By the way. Uh, you know, in the Tony Awards, we reported that there was one non-binary performer, Justin David Sullivan, in, this, in the show, and Juliet, who said, I don't want to be considered in a male category or a female category. So just don't consider me. But Harrison Gee, who was nominated last year uh, and, and is non-binary, says, oh, I would be considered for the, you know, the ma- male actor of the, of the year. Um, I never go into things expecting to be the person that changes everything. I know it's not going to change overnight, um, however much it needs to. So it's tough with these categories. You know, some people have gotten rid of sex categories entirely, and that's not necessarily working out great, but we'll see. 
So we're down to our last 11 seconds. So I'm just going to say thanks for being with us. And thanks for being with me, Marin. Oh, you're welcome. Everybody come say hi to me at queef40.com. I'll see you next time.